And now let us pray. Holy God, the first and the last, the beginning and the end of all things, you are worthy of praise from all your creation. Sun, moon, and stars praise you. Earth, sea, and sky praise you. Every living thing praises you in its own way. And so we praise you in our human diversity, joining our varied voices with all of your creatures in heaven and on earth. You fill our lives with the wonder of your love in Jesus Christ. Your spirit moves throughout the world to reveal your purposes for every living thing. Receive our prayers and praise this day, for you are the source of our life and our hope, holy God, ever three, ever one. Loving God, Jesus commanded us to love one another so the world would know that we follow him. Yet we confess that we do not always love one another, at least not the way Jesus loves us. The world has seen our squabbling, our history of hypocrisy, our lack of compassion for those who don't measure up. Loving God, forgive us. Lord Jesus, continue to love us. Holy Spirit, fill us with your love so that the world will witness your love in our words and our actions. Amen. Friends, Jesus taught us that no one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. Christ has laid down his life for us and invites us to love one another as he has loved us. Let us rejoice in this forgiving love. Let us share it with each other every day. And for this we say thanks be to God. Amen. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 148, and we will read it responsively. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his host. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling his command, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above the earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord. Amen. And our gospel reading this morning is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 13. Uh, our lectionary only has us reading verses 31 to 35, but I am going to read starting at verse 1 all the way to 35, um, because I think it's important for the context in our sermon today. John chapter 13, verses 1 to 35. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. 
for he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You called me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. I am not speaking of all of you. I know whom I have chosen, but it is to fulfill the scripture. The one who ate my bread has lifted his heel against me. I tell you this now before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe that I am he. Very truly I tell you, whoever receives one whom I send receives me, and whoever receives me receives him who sent me. After saying this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and declared, Very truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he was speaking. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter therefore motioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. So while reclining next to Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. And so when he had dipped the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. After he had received the bread, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, Do quickly what you are going to do. Now no one at the table knew why he said this to him. Some thought that because Ju Judas had the common purse, Jesus was telling him, buy what we need for the festival, or that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the piece of bread, he immediately went out, and it was night. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our children's hymn is number 205, O Love, How Deep, How Broad, How High, and it's sung by Mary Ann McVicker. <laughs> 